Tuesday, July 19th, 2016. Maneco 64 here, home of alter alternative economics and uh, contrarian views. Uh, I'd like to talk about derivatives uh, this evening. Uh, there's a lot of talk about derivatives and uh, a lot of people have questions about derivatives. So here we go. Uh, basically, you know, uh, derivative is a financial instrument, almost like an insurance on an underlying asset. And the modern day derivatives market really sprung up uh, in 19th century U.S. in the Midwest, uh, especially Chicago. Uh, where, you know, people came, you know, to sell the grains, the cattle, and uh, the buyers also came to buy the grains and the cattle. And, for example, a farmer who, who grew corn, he wanted to uh, lock in a price, uh, you know, in the future because he thought the price of corn might go down and he needed to know how much money he was going to get he would, you know, sell a future uh, in corn. And the, the buyer of the corn, he, would, he thought that actually the price might go up, so he'd buy a future. And that's how it worked. But these people really, uh, these actors actually wanted to, you know, the seller had the corn to sell, and the buyer really needed the corn to buy. And that's how it started, the uh, Chicago... Uh, board of Trade, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The Board of Trade was more like livestock. The Mercantile Exchange was more grains, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And that's how it started. And that's why it's leveraged, because it was just like an insurance. And the exchanges knew that these people, uh, you know, the sellers or the, the growers had the, the grain to sell, and the buyers would buy the grain so they only needed to put like five percent down or ten percent down uh in terms of margin uh and then though that it grew uh more risky because you had people who came in to speculate who actually had no intention of buying corn or selling corn and that's how it became speculative but still it, they these contracts were traded on the exchanges the prices were public, uh, you know, the, the public knew where, where things were, and that's how derivatives started, uh, modern day derivatives, because they've been, we've had, I think derivatives have been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Uh, and during the tulip mania in Holland, people were writing options on tulip bulbs, so it's nothing new, it's just like a a bet or an insurance, and usually you don't put all the money down because you're betting on un on something that you're not going to do yet, and that's how it gets risky. So that's how it started, derivatives. Uh, it's just people uh, trying to insure themselves against future transactions. And uh, with the uh, end of uh, Bretton Woods and the gold uh, standard in 1971, uh, interest rates, well, first of all, currencies began to fluctuate wildly. They weren't fixed against the dollar anymore. So financial derivatives came about uh, on currencies. And then interest rates started, you know, fluctuating wildly. So you had derivatives on uh, interest rates and also bonds uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, swaps uh, like they were... They are uh, derivatives on exchanging fixed rate against floating rates. So in the beginning, in the 80s, uh, the uh, derivatives on financial assets were mainly traded on the Chicago Board of Trade, which started out with the um, you know, cattle and uh, livestock in the 19th century. You also had the New York, uh, the COMEX, sorry, the New York NYMEX, the New York Mercantile Exchange, where they traded more like the precious metals and also orange juice, uh, things like that. And uh, in the 1990s, um, the, you also had the development of 
what's called OTC derivatives, over-the-counter derivatives, and these are derivatives traded amongst the big international banks, and they're very opaque because you might have, let's say, uh, a company like, uh, I don't know, a pharmaceutical company or a big corporation, they'll call uh, JP Morgan and say, we need to hedge our interest rate exposure and JP Morgan will write a, a derivative contract for them like a swap and it's very you know that and that's where um, you know a lot of the uh, trouble comes in because uh, they're not standardized these derivatives JP Morgan will will just write a derivative for uh, this client and it, it's going to be very opaque and you know, a lot of these big banks, they ripped off the clients with these derivatives. You know, it's very, you know, let's say a, a client got in uh, on the 1st of January. And if he wanted to get out on the 6th of January, it was going to cost them a lot of money. But in an exchange, uh, if you buy a derivative and it goes up, you know, in price in the next couple of hours, you get out and you didn't make the money. So OTC uh, is very opaque and uh, in my opinion... And also Catherine Austin Fitz, who, who's been in the market, she said the OTC derivatives are mainly an instrument to uh, rip off their, you know, the, the clients. Um, and so the danger about derivatives is that uh, it's highly leveraged. You see, if you buy a future on the 10-year note, uh, treasury note, you know, the notional amount is $100,000 uh, worth of uh, notes per contract, but you only have to put like $5,000 to $10,000 down, depending on the margin. And uh, so some people, you know, and there's bets, like in the 19th century, the speculators come in and they make huge bets. They don't even, they've never even bought like a treasury note or sold a treasury note. They're just betting on the price. And, uh, also, the OTC derivatives, uh, you know, the big crisis in 08 was to do with companies that were actually insuring uh, these derivatives, like AIG Financial Products. Uh, they were insuring credit default swaps, which is basically an over-the-counter derivative, uh, for example, on, on a bond or uh, government bonds, let's say... Uh, Corporation XYZ comes and, and tells, you know, an investment bank, uh, I've got uh, $10 million uh, worth of Italian government bonds. Can you write some insurance on that for me, a credit default swap, in case the Italian government goes bust? And then, go, you know, the bank will sell them the insurance. And if the government, the Italian government goes bust, uh, the bank has to pay off. But the thing is that these bets become so big, uh, and a lot of times in the in, in the 08, especially the subprime uh, mortgages, there were OTC derivatives on these, and they ballooned the size, you know, uh, of the rivers balloon. They were much bigger than the actual market, and the big investment banks they thought that these would never fail because. They, they always say, oh, we match. The, there's the same amount of longs and shorts, and uh, the nominal amount doesn't matter. But it did in 08, you know. And AIG, uh, you know, the U.S. Treasury had to bail them out $180 billion. And if they hadn't done that, go, you know, I think it was Goldman Sachs, they had insured a lot of their derivatives that they wrote to their clients through AIG. So it became a huge... Uh, you know, uh, out of control gambling. Basically, people going to the casino and watching some players in the blackjack table and then at all the crowds around watching the big players were making bets and bets and the bets were astronomical. You know, they got uh, the nominal amount for OTC and exchange-traded derivatives. And I have to say OTC is much bigger than the, the exchange-traded is over a quadrillion right now. After, and it was over a quadrillion 
during the 08 crisis. The only reason now they talk about 700 trillion is that the Bank for International Settlements changed the accounting method for derivatives from mark to market to mark to model. So from 1.2 quadrillion, I think was the number of the notional amount, they got it down to 600 trillion. But I think it's more, you know, the realistic number is over a quadrillion dollars, which is a thousand uh, trillion dollars. So yes, you know, the risk, uh, there's as many shorts as long, you know, uh, it's in a perfect world, like Greenspan said, you you kind of uh, spread the risk with derivatives, but you haven't. It's like a disaster because, you know, people are betting on things like many times over, and a lot of times the investment, these investment banks in the OTC market, they think that these events can't happen, and uh, all they want is the uh, fees for, for, you know, selling these derivatives or buying them back or trading for cl clients. And what happened in 08 is that the uh, taxpayers of the world had to bail out these banks because they, they made, you know, they wrote these huge bets, over-the-counter derivatives, highly leveraged, and, it, you know, the shit hit the fan, you know, something, you know, what they thought could never happen, happened, and counterparties like Lehman collapse, so they, you know, the shorts and long, uh, the chain was broken, so to speak. And nothing has been fixed, unfortunately. Uh, and it's still out there, all these derivatives. And, uh, and that's why they're dangerous, uh, because of the leverage. You know, it's been abused. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, if you have more questions, just Feel free to uh, send comments, you know, write comments, and I'll try to answer them. But in a nutshell, that's what it is, derivatives. They're bets on uh, financial in instrument. And the reason they're dangerous is that they're highly leveraged. And uh, it, it's like having insurance on your house, you know, a fire insurance. And that's fine. You, you, you insure your house, for fi you know, for fire and damage. Uh, and you, let's say you insure your house for $200,000. But then can you imagine if all your neighbors came and uh, sold insurance to other people on your house, like five, you know, 10 times the value of your house? It's crazy. And that's what these OTC derivatives uh, in financial instruments are. They're just uh, humongous bets on underlying assets. But the amount is much bigger than the underlying assets and it's highly leveraged as well. So if you enjoyed this video on derivatives, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.